Good morning and welcome to our Tuesday morning thought for today. This week we're looking at Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, and really from verse 18 down to verse 22. Uh, this passage is a passage which it takes a bit of study to understand what's actually going on in it. Some parts of God's Word, some parts of our Bible, and New Testament especially, we can just simply open our Bibles, read and understand what it is that we're meant to, to know what, what God's saying to us from His Word. Other parts we have to go sometimes to commentaries, sometimes to thesaurus, sometimes to parallel Bibles, etc., just to try and work out what's going on. And that's why we are very thankful for having commentaries on, on various books in the Bible, because they do a lot of the hard work for us and they explain it for us. But this passage today is, is another strange one. Jesus has been asked a question. He's basically asked, why are your disciples not fasting when the Pharisees and John the Baptist's disciples, they fast? Why do yours not fast? And instead of Jesus simply going to them and saying, look, this is why, and explaining to them that uh, they, they, they aren't fasting because you don't fast when the thing that you've been fasting for is actually with you. Because the whole way through the whole Old Testament, people were praying and fasting for God to send the Messiah or the Christ as it is in the Greek. And so why would they continue to pray and fast for the thing that they're praying and fasting for if they're actually with the, the Messiah, the Messiah has actually come and joined them? But what Jesus says is something quite different. He, he, he couches it in this picture of a, a, a bridegroom coming and spending time with his guests and saying to them, well, let me read the words for you. It's actually verses 19 of Mark chapter 2. There Jesus answers and says to them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and they will fast in that day. So Jesus is basically saying that he is comparing himself to a bridegroom. Now that, that might sound like a strange Thing to say unless you know for example what Isaiah 62 says when it refers to God being the groom coming for the church where this this likening between God obviously Jesus is God coming for his church God and the the church being united this idea that the the bride is the church of Jesus Christ Christ has come as a bridegroom now the guests are those who have been watching and waiting for Jesus those who understand who he is, those who are part of what Jesus is going to do in the future. But here as we read it, we might not understand this. And a lot of the people who would have heard Jesus say it that day will most likely have gone away scratching their heads and saying, what under the sun is he talking about? I don't understand him. Could he not have said it more clearly to us? And yet for those people who knew their Old Testament well enough, they were given an opportunity to see through a window almost and see what Jesus was saying. Clearly, they would have associated this idea of a bridegroom with what has been referred to as uh, what God has been likened to in the Old Testament. And the connection would have been made and the light would have gone on in their minds. And suddenly the Holy Spirit would have revealed to them that here in front of them, at this moment in time, they were standing talking to Jesus Christ, who was the, the Messiah. It's incredible when you think about it. I remember standing once in uh, the Faith Mission Bookshop many, many years ago, and I was chatting at the counter uh, to Edward Douglas, and he said to me something about, uh, are you going to the, the concert tonight? And uh, I was standing beside somebody, and I hadn't looked at them, and I said, uh, oh yes, the Michael Card concert. And the gentleman beside me turned to me and said, yes, pleased to meet you. And little did I know that this was the, the American singer-songwriter, Michael Card, whose concert I was going to that evening, whose music I had. And I was standing right beside him and I hadn't recognised him. And he turned and, and shook my hand and introduced himself to me. I felt very stupid because here I was saying I was going to his concert, but somehow I hadn't noticed that I was standing beside him and that he was actually in my presence. And so for these people, all of a sudden, this Messiah that they've been praying for, they've been waiting for, they've been expecting, was standing right beside them, right in front of them. And he declares himself to them. And all of a sudden, it's like the, the, the veil is lifted. The, the window's cleared, or the mirror's cleared, and they can see clearly this picture of who this person is because he's compared himself to the bridegroom. And this is what God has compared himself to. 
And it's just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful picture. And I, I would love to have been there to watch the lights go on in their minds and to see their eyes widen and realize just who it was that was in front of them. But you know, friends, the Lord is with us every moment of every day. And sometimes we, we can't see him because we allow our sight to be clouded with the problems and the, the issues of this world. And yet Jesus is with us. He's promised to be with us through his Holy Spirit. We should be watching out for him. We should be welcoming him every moment, moment we open our eyes in the morning. We should be thankful he's there for us. Instead of running around going, oh, I, I can't find God in my life. I don't know where he is. He's right there with us. We just need to trust him, read our Bibles, understand through our Bibles where we find him. And then we realize he's been there all the time. Hopefully you will know the nearness of the Lord this Tuesday. And we'll see you again tomorrow morning. God bless.